Oh well, I've gone and done it. After procrastinating for something close to a year, I've finally taken the plunge and purchased a 48-inch monitor for my sim. It's from Asus or Asus, Republic of Gamers, and it's a monster, both in terms of size and specifications. And by choice, it's an OLED display. Are you a big screen simmer? If not, why not? Hello and welcome to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark and thank you very much for watching. I've spent most of my life in the corporate world or in the consultancy world, but I've recently retired. Yay! And I've been able to draw down on my pension and I've decided to indulge myself in something I've had my eye on for quite some time. And it's this beast of a monitor here. Now it has just about every bell and whistle built into it, as you can imagine. And yes, it was expensive. I make no apologies for that. It was a repackaged item from Amazon UK and it cost me just over £1,000. Any regrets? None at all. Now you may be wondering, what's a person who flies in VR, like me, doing buying a large screen monitor? Well, I don't do all my flying in VR. I do spend most of my time in VR because of the sense of immersion uh, that it provides. I've had different monitor setups in the past, three monitors, 1080p, some large monitors, but nothing as large as this or of this sort of quality. And I've been surprised by how transformative and immersive it is. Now, this video is not about this particular monitor, but for those that are not into VR, or VR is not for you, flying on the big screen may be worth something considering. Before we get into it, a quick word from this video sponsor. Flights and Builder is an American-based company that provides navigational units such as the GNS 530 and 430 and G1000 for use with X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Simulator. I have personally used these items and recommend them. If you'd like to know more, check out my videos, link in the notes below. These flight sim peripherals allow you to take advantage of the pop-out panels available. In the case of Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's auto configures, and anything you can do in sim, you can do with these units, and provides great tactile feedback, including twin rotary dials and push buttons, very reasonably priced in comparison to the competition, Link to Flight Sim Builder's website in the notes below. Being an OLED display with a sub-pixel array, it produces an exceptionally clear picture with very vibrant colours. The colour palette is exceptional, and being OLED, blacks are jet black. In fact, the brightness and vibrancy of the colours makes my other monitors look, well, almost dull. The audio from the monitor is acceptable, but not outstanding. But the 4K display runs at a standard 120Hz, but there's a built-in overclock to 138Hz. And this with built-in G-Sync compatibility helps to keep gameplay smooth. I've always been a sucker for some of the Republic of Gamers kit. I'll often go for that as opposed to anything else, but just a personal preference rather than any technical benefit. The monitor has exceptional connectivity with HDMI and DP ports, and what's nice about them, they're easily accessible. The on-screen display is accessed via the bottom of the monitor, and there's more options and different configurations than you can shake a stick at. Although you do need to download the monitor from the Asus website. And of course, being OLED, it's very, very thin indeed. If you do buy a monitor and you do decide to go for OLED, there are some risks associated to that with regards to screen burning. By screen burning, where there's a static image displayed on the monitor, perhaps for day after day after day after day, that image can burn in. So a good example might be the taskbar in Windows if you're using an OLED for your day-to-day -day work. Obviously, that image would have to be there for an extended period of time for that to happen, but it is something that you have to be conscious with. I don't use this for my day-to-day use. I have other monitors. I've got other 32-inch monitors and so on that I use. I use this for my flight sim at the moment 
um, and nothing much else, maybe the odd movie or YouTube or something like that, but not for my day-to-day -day work, video editing and so on. One of the advantages of this particular one, it comes with a remote control, so when I'm not using it, I can simply just switch it off. So what is it about flying on the big screen that's so different to flying on a smaller TV or monitor? Well, it's everything appears and feels life-size. It feels more real, it's more immersive. And if you want to add in something like head tracking, I've got my Tobii Eye Tracker 5 installed on this. Let's just activate that, centralize the view. And this just enhances everything even more as I move my head. So my view is changing. And yeah, these Cessnas are that small. But it just feels amazing. It's a bit like being in VR, to be honest. You, you feel like you're in the cockpit, that everything's reachable and touchable. That's one of the attractions of VR. And flying on the big screen, well, for those that are not into VR, this is as close as you can get at the moment. And it's amazing. Throw in head tracking and you're away. I use the Tobii Eye Tracker 5, a link in the notes below, as well as a discount code if you're interested. But I'm really pleased with the results. And uh, I'm recording this on my phone, so you'll have to excuse that what you're seeing on the monitor, you're not probably getting the full experience of what I'm experiencing looking directly at the monitor. But be it a monitor or a TV, and there are some very reasonably priced TVs as well. If you want to go up market in the TV world, look for the LG C1 or C2, something like that. The world of opportunity is worth exploring. I love it, and it's something you should consider. Anyway, thanks very much for joining me today. I'm going to carry on on my flight over Hamburg. I'll see you soon. Stay well. Bye for now.